Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. We have myself, Chris Peters, Kareem Mays, Rick Rodriguez, and Bill Maybauer. And tonight we're discussing starting the new year off strong, writing a commitment to yourself. And we're discussing ways that you can fulfill your goals when you make a New Year's resolution. We're talking about different ways that people can stick to their plans for the New Year and what they're doing. So guys, what are some ways that you think you could, what are some New Year's resolutions that you guys have made to yourself starting 2016? What are some plans you guys have? I know I'm going to be hitting the gym constantly. I have had a problem with that forever. I keep telling myself I'm going to work out every day. <laughs> and I never show up or I'll, I'll sit there and say I'll go next week or next day and then two months later I haven't worked out so I don't want to start getting really out of shape make that a priority I might even write a contract like I didn't pay me what I'm worth to get there so I know that I made a promise to myself I agree and I think that for me I know that I really want to work harder on getting this show out there more, doing more stuff with uh, our radio broadcasting, as well as getting more people on here and getting this content out to people who really appreciate what we're doing. And I know Rick's been here for a long time, and Rick, it's so wonderful to have you here tonight. What are some commitments you're making to yourself for 2016 to get, your more, to get more out of life that you're going for? Thanks. I, I appreciate it, you guys and having a place to home and just be myself and stuff like that and um, my uh, I when I when I was younger I made uh, like uh, commitments but now like um, I'm 57 years old and I, I sort of am starting to figure some things out for myself and one of them being that um, the, my, my first goal would be to, to be happier than I've ever been in my life and uh, I've always been, you know, pretty happy. It doesn't really matter. But I'm finding out that um, when I come from the happy place, like people say, that whatever I do um, is more effective for me. I don't know about anyone else. Like, you know, because I'm trying to create, I'm creating a uh, joyful, abundant um, life and environment. So it's like if I go around, oh, crap, you know, this is wrong, that is wrong. It doesn't seem like it would attract joy and abundance right. to me. Right. That's just my take on it. So I'm focusing on real, like, basic, basic uh, things. And then once I'm – if I'm not happy and going with the flow, I, I'm not going to do it. Like, uh, now nah, I'm, I'm going to kick back. I'm not going to do it. But when I'm happy and I'm inspired – and and I'm and I'm going with the tide or going downstream or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Then I then I'm going to start kicking it into action. So right, and because so, I noticed. Oh, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. No, no. I, I so do you think it's important then to make a commitment to yourself to stay in the most positive vibrational energy you can? Do you think that's very important? For me, it is. I don't know about er anyone else, but yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was saying. Right. But for me. You know, and everyone has a different idea of what's positive, you know. Mm -hmm. um, somebody could say, well, you know, uh, Peters, he's a meddler. That's not positive, but uh, that that's not necessarily true. That's just right. your uh, closed, like, perception of reality or something, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly, yeah. But, yes, I, I would say that would be a very concise way of putting it like you always do. Thank you. Yeah, because I know that ever since I started this show, and had met wonderful people like you and wonderful people like my bro Kareem and now Mr. Bill Maybauer here and other people we've had on the show you know we I feel like these people have come into my life for a reason and like I'm providing a, a different paradigm of thought for these people to engage in and they're giving me different perspectives on things and they're allowing me to think differently and experience different vibrational energy and that's the beauty of a mastermind. You know, Napoleon Hill talks about how important it is to have a mastermind group when you're, when you're trying to achieve great things. You need to have many minds working towards the same goal because it makes the paradigm stronger. The energy that's going out is stronger. And it, it creates a faster acceleration to get to, that end, to get to that end goal. Would you agree with me, Rick? You're muted, buddy. Yes, definitely, and um, 
what what you realize at the age that you are like I you, you know I say I worked in surgery and there was teams of people but I I never re I realized at certain times in surgery that when certain of us people got together certain surgeons certain assistant certain anesthesiologists like it worked like grease and then other times there was resistance I'm not saying all of us were happy but we just worked together well you know yeah. and we yeah. sort of had we knew what our goal was our goal was to to fix this patient and then everything else didn't matter at the time this just right. we were all focused on the same goal it's yeah. not that we were all just happy skipping down the freaking hall type of people because we weren't you know mm -hmm. but um it, you're right about the mastermind though cuz i i noticed that when i was in surgery like people would get together and all of a sudden they had like a single goal or they were pointed at at some specific even subject like this and then right. things would happen i mean mm -hmm. the results mm -hmm. would in your life would be better you know oh yeah yeah and and i under i know now more than ever that the more because i've become such a positive person i've met this beautiful girl that i'm now hanging out with you know and i hadn't had anybody physical in my life for over two years and then we start hanging out and you know I've been able to help her with a few things that she's been dealing with and helping her feel better about herself and that's what I want to do for people like all my friends a girlfriend you know make them feel as good about themselves as they can because you know we're all in this together we're all in this life together and we're all here to make a difference in each in someone's life regardless of how shitty life may have been for, for someone up until this point, you know, no matter how bad somebody is, they can turn their life around and they can become a good person. They can become a positive person. They can become a productive person. They can become an ambitious person. They can become someone who achieves whatever they want out of life. And they can become someone who can lead and inspire others to do the same. And that's where I've come from. Because I've come through hell and back and I'm still going and I'm still re reaching my fullest potential. And now I feel like I finally have the people in this mastermind that believe in me and that that makes me feel so good about what we're doing with the entrepreneur power hour and that we're giving people that value that people can come on here they can say what they want and be who they are they don't have to worry if they're like in a business suit or any of that BS like I say every show you know this is a place where people can just chill and be what whoever they are and and say whatever they want so uh, Kareem, we haven't heard from you yet. What's up, dude? I was just listening. One thing I was thinking about with New Year's resolution is I want to start taking, not that I haven't taken Pay Me What I'm Worth seriously or my other course, but really just kind of dive deep into my personal development, like yes. start doing it every day. Because mm -hmm. sometimes there are days that I don't do it or days that I kind of slack off and I say, like, I don't need the mastermind. I don't really need to do anything. And then I keep doing that for a couple of days, and then I have to get back and start reading personal development again. Mm -hmm. And I can see it actually equating to like working out, where the energy starts to fade. And if I'm not doing personal development on a nearly constant basis, I start to fall off, and I start to get bitter, or I start to question what I'm doing. Yep. It doesn't help. I, I think it's the equivalent of keeping yourself plugged in. You know, like, you know, you keep a battery going and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. That's how your mind works. We have to keep our minds connected to and keep ourselves focused on the goal at hand. Because once you start to lose focus on that, it becomes less important. So I think that it's vital that whatever you're focusing on that you want to achieve, that you keep it laser and you keep that fire burning because that's what's going to propel you towards your goal no matter how many setbacks you have, you know, if you've got like people telling you you can't do it, well, that just motivates me more. You know, when I got somebody telling me, well, that's a waste of time, I just go, well, he just motivated me more. Thanks. I don't look at it as a negative anymore because they don't know what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to achieve here, and I am here to show people that I can do it. You know, so there you go. I like it. I do. And Bill looks like he's about to walk into his house. Anyway, Bill got Rick, home. go ahead. Rick, you got anything you want to add? You can speak freely, man. Oh, Bill, go ahead if you're going to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that I've been doing and talking about the uh, goals and stuff, 
Well, I've got a whole list of goals. I, I made up oh, four, five, six pages of the top of the goal. You know, I have a you know, financial goal. But now I've got to go through and fill it out. That's the hard part. Oh, yes. So I want to, you know, I, I know I need to do it. I need to write them down. I need to put a date on them. And yes. And get that all taken care of. Otherwise, it's it's just a wish. And right That's now, right. it's all been a wish for about the last year. Mm-hmm. But so you, I need. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and that's the biggest thing that I've got to sit down and do and uh, take some and concentrate on that because uh, you know I, I want you know I want more money. I want more freedom. I want to retire. A variety of things. So got to write them down and then break them down into you know yearly, weekly, monthly. Break them down into goals and bite-sized steps. Yep. So that's my big project for the next month. Awesome. That sounds good, man. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, you, because when you're going to put something into action, when you externalize that goal onto paper, you're, tran- you're transcribing it to the universe. You're saying to the universe, this is what I want. And the, you're telling the universe this is what you want because you're externalizing it and it's become physical. You've put the goal into physical form. And so right there, you've begun the manifestation process. When you write something down, and you write down goals, you've begun the process of, of attracting them. You're putting yourself in that vibrational state. Well, it's a long process, and it's not an easy process to nope. do. So It's not easy, but you know what? That's why entrepreneurs and leaders like us are going to change the world, because we're going to sit people down, get them on this show, and say, look, you can be and do whatever the hell you want. You just have to apply yourself. You have to have a why that's going to make you cry, and you have to be determined. You have to bleed for your goal. You have to sweat for your goal. You have to cry for your goal. And no matter what, you have to persist. Because without persistence, you have nothing. Persistence is everything. Would you guys agree with that? Yep. And I'm just about to my townhouse, so I think I'm going to... I'll, I'll show you a picture of my, uh, where, I'm, where I live. But, uh, cool, we man. got a tour. It's like Cribs. Yeah, we're going to get a live <laughs> Cribs tour on the Entrepreneur Power Hour from Bill's Crib. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's the man. Bill's the man. Yeah, he's got the million-dollar house. Wow, that actually is really well, nice. It's, it's a townhouse, so anyhow. It's nice, though, it's man. I like it. Yeah, I do, too. you be like, this is my yeah, Ferrari. Nice. I don't want to... And it's nice and foggy here today. It's been foggy all day today, so. <laughs> and cool. In the 30s. So, anyhow, yeah. well, thanks a lot, guys. And I will see you next year then, all right? Oh, you're, 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 you're getting off the show already? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to get off because I'm, I'm home and Patty and I got to go do something, so. Okay, okay, Bill. Well, thanks for being here. And we're trying to get some other people Oops. on. But, uh, yeah. We'll see you in the new year, man, for sure. Definitely. Okay, thanks. I will see you around, okay. man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, yeah, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where does he think, live, Chris? Um, where does he live, Kareem? I actually forgot. I have to I think, remember. I think Brian Miller's going to join us, Kareem. Oh, yay. I, I gave him the link. He lives in Olympia, Washington. Olympia, yeah. Washington. Oh, yeah. Creeping on Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, where's your wife? That's, that's public information. Yeah, where's your wife, Rick? Is she coming? She, no, she's in there getting doing something, wifing around, baking what? bread. And, <laughs> <laughs> Are you really uh, paid what you're worth? Me? Yes. I, mean, I think so. Um <laughs> If you look at the lifestyle that I lead, and then I, I wrote a PR today on, on IBO, and uh, IBO Toolbox, and you can look at it by going to rickrodriguez.com, by the way. Oh, and, we will. Um, my friend, uh, he became a multimillionaire uh, when he was 26, and I grew up with him uh, since eighth grade, right? And I'd hook up. Uh, yeah, we were in eighth grade together, and, and he was actually almost married my sister, but so I, I guess I gave it away who he was, but... I, I, maybe I shouldn't have. But anyways, he was a multimillionaire when he was 26 years old, owned all these properties, had all this, like, piles so of money, he got, really. He got, oh, your mom called, Jen. So he got into real estate? 
Yeah, from his oh. brothers. He had older brothers. Okay. And right. uh, they were in – his dad was a construction worker, and they started buying these properties, fixing them up, renting them or selling them, turning them over, whatever, when wow. he was like 19 maybe. Okay. And maybe even before that because um, his, uh, his family was always real entrepreneurial, right? Right. But when I went back to see him, he, he still is a multimillionaire, and he still has a real estate company, but he still wants this lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Who know? doesn't? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. he's always like, Rick, I would give you every penny that I have to just be out of debt and living in Hawaii on, on practically nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, dude, you could have it all because he's always busy. He's always working, Chris. It's not that he doesn't, like, he's like, hey, I get, I'm get, i having two weeks off this year. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to get up from an alarm clock. He's been getting up with an alarm oh, clock. And, I, and I, I used it too when I worked in surgery, but yeah. – um, He's still doing it, and like he's maybe a couple of years younger than me because I was a little okay. bit ahead. But, right. um, but he still wants this lifestyle and still hasn't figured it out, and still has a pile of money. All of the stuff is paid for, beautiful home, kids, wife, still right. working his butt off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that he never will turn the corner. Every single one of his family is the same way. They're very wealthy. They own construction companies and roofing companies and stuff like that, but they never were able to go. We're selling all this stuff, buying a place that's paid for, and uh, setting out a budget and you know living the life we want to live. They could never do it. It's too scary for them. You know? That I think that's the danger of getting trapped in a rut and in a certain lifestyle routine. You think you start to become almost stagnant. And you start to think that there, nothing else is possible but the regular nine to five. And even when you're wealthy, I mean, there's tons of rich people who are miserable because they don't have, they still don't know how to be free. Yeah. You know, they could have tons of money, but they still don't know how to be free. And I think that is one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about wealth. And being an entrepreneur means working your ass off so that you can be free. And that's the ultimate goal. You, 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 we, we, me and Kareem, and I know yourself and everybody we have on the show, we all want to be free. And, you know, that's why we're doing Pay Me What I'm Worth, because we want to be free. And we want to help others become free. So I think for 2016, one of my New Year's resolutions that I'm going to be sticking to is keeping my mind as positive as possible. And coming up with brilliant ideas for new show topics, interviewing entrepreneurs on our Entrepreneur Power Hour radio podcast. And, you know, me and Kareem are working hard on our next books, our books that are going to be coming out. It's going to be a big year for us, man. You know, and we're also going to be giving away free memberships to people like yourself, Rick, because you're always here, so you're getting a free membership. And we're giving, we're giving away 12 Pay Me What I'm Worth books to people that we think would like to be in the class with us. So we got a lot of big plans coming this year, man. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited That's for awesome. 2016, too. I think the most important thing is, you know, once you get free, what do you want to do? Because you can get free like your buddy. You can have a million-dollar house. You can have a million-dollar car. Everything paid for and then sit around and say, I don't know what I want to do. And, and I know people like that. They, they're good at making money. They are. And some of them were millionaires before they were 30. But they don't exactly know or have a purpose. Like I could say that I'm going to play in a band or I'm going to actually go out there and do public speaking. They don't really have any other hobbies. So it's not just important to get free. It's important to also have some kind of goal. Oh, absolutely. What do you want to do after everything's all said and done? Mm -hmm. Are you, you going to hang out <laughs> or are you going to do something to change the world or what do you want to do? I don't think there's a wrong answer, but you definitely have to have something in mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do because you could have all that freedom and then you could sit around and go, man, I didn't plan this very well. Now what do I want to do? Because I know for me one of my goals is to never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop seeking more out of myself and more out of life because that's what we're here to do, man. We're here to fucking evolve and to grow and to help others do the same because 
How's, how's this planet going to change if we don't raise consciousness, if we don't wait, raise awareness, and we don't help people reach divinity within themselves and reach that plane where, and within themselves of potentiality where they can go, holy shit, I literally can make anything I want happen for myself. And they're not held back by limitations anymore. They don't have that limitation consciousness anymore. And like Rick was saying, put it so eloquently, Rick's like, I don't go there. I don't, I'm not in that vibrational state. And it's because Rick has had years and years of personal development. Am I right, Rick? <laughs> yeah. Lots of years of personal development and um, working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I, it took me, I think, six or seven years to get my first black belt. And that was a lot of personal development. It was in Taekwondo. I love it. And um, it took several different teachers because I didn't, after a while, I didn't get along with the teacher or something. I didn't like them or they didn't have the philosophy that I really felt that I wanted to learn from them. So I went through like three teachers to get my first black belt and then it took me another 10 years to get my black belt in Kung Fu maybe until I found a teacher. But I still trained. So when I when I found the teacher that I sort of vibed to, then it only took me like a year because mm -hmm. I had already been training for so long and reading books. And one of the books that really helped me a lot were the principles of key and uh, how to build a life force. It was like a it's still on the internet. Uh, the principles of key. It's like an old book, and it's like this old Chinese dude wrote it, and all the stuff that would like build up his life force. You know, you've seen awesome. those old movies, you guys. You know, I was yeah, obsessed with the Audi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dragon. My dad Whoa. would go to Triple X movies, and I would go to Kung Fu Theater. <laughs> My dad would go to the like all the stupid ones. Hey, kid, you want to go see the skin flicks? He called them. I'm like, no. <laughs> <clears throat> I went with them awesome, one time. Rick. I went with him one time. I was like, this is the worst place ever, sitting and watching people have sex with your dad. No. And all these like weird, stinky old men sitting around. I'm like, dude, this is not for me. Oh, and they, they're they paying for that, you know? So I, I got obsessed with those old dubbed kung fu movies, and my dad would take me to Milwaukee. Really? And, and like it was a buck, and you could go there all day, right? And my dad would go, okay, I'm only giving you a buck to go in there. I'm like, Dad, but I, I'm going to be here all day. He's like, pick up a ticket from the last show and walk through the back door and go to the next one. I'm like, Dad, I'll get in trouble. He goes, you won't get in trouble. Don't worry about it. You have your stuff, don't you? My dad was such a stupid that way. So Your that's how I grew hilarious. up. You know? okay. My dad's like, okay, you can drink, you can do drugs, and you can have hookers, but do it at home and share. Otherwise, no share. go. That's like, it, awesome. like everyone would come over to my house to drink beer and do whatever they do, right? And my dad would go just like this. Okay, everyone, car keys, car keys, car keys. He'd wait till you pass out probably and be driving your car all night, you know, and and trying to take out your girlfriend or something. So, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he, he's going to play everyone, you know. That's what he wow. did. But that's sort of the environment I grew up in, and it – it was tiring after a while. <laughs> my dad wasn't happy with that sort yeah. of manip external manipulative lifestyle. He's having a lot of fun, though. I mean, but yeah. he really wasn't happy. Yeah, but well, you had Mr. Just... Miyagi. Go you ahead. What's that? On, you had Mr. Miyagi on TV teaching you uh -huh. how to master the chi force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and his dad yeah. was mastering some other force. <laughs> yeah, my, my dad, uh, he was good at uh, mastering the chi force, too. But he directed at picking up women, gambling, and hustling. Yeah. You know, that's just where his point of focus was. He was good at it. I remember one time I, I walked into the bar and my dad's staring at me because uh, my stepmom goes, go get your dad. We're grilling out on Saturday. So that's I go awesome. down the street. I go get my dad out of the bar, right, and he's staring at me. And you give – I don't know if it's like this in Canada where you give a dollar and you get the shake of the day. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, the, the girl I'm seeing used to be a dancer. And um, I saw I saw her dance, and that's I was like crazy about her the minute I saw her, eh? And uh, I don't know if I ever put dollars in her g-string, but <laughs> you know I, I know all about that, man. I've been to strip clubs all over Canada, and yeah, I mean 
Get well, this wasn't get a strip club, but it was just a regular bar my dad went to. And okay. if you if you get five naturals on the shaking of the dice, you get to split the the pot. And people are throwing a dollar in there trying to get it all week, you know. Well, that day the pot was like six hundred dollars, and my dad had already rigged the dice. I thought you were talking so, about the strip club, Rick. No, it's all right. My dad had already rigged the dice, so I went in there to get him, you know. And uh, he's, like, staring at me. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? When my dad gives me that look, I'm supposed to do something that I'm not doing. He's like, shake of the day. Shake of the day. I'm like, I'll, I'll put the dollar in for you. I'm like, uh, something awesome. right about this. He's like, out of the side of his mouth, don't shake it. You know, so I just, he goes, flop it. Because I know what that means, just flop it over, you know. Because right. I, I hear my dad all the time, his terminology, just flop it. I flopped it over. It was five sixes. My dad goes, winner, like that. And we got 300 and some dollars. And my dad goes, you're splitting it with me because that was my dollar. <laughs> wow. Like, what the hell? I was so scared. Then I realized, oh, my God, my dad was cheating. <laughs> what was I going to do, give him the money back? And I realized awesome, it, bro. you know, when he goes, just flop it. I realized hey, it right there. The I wouldn't have had to, you know, but, <laughs> hey, I, I got some money, though. <laughs> right on, dude. That's Nothing awesome, wrong buddy. with that. That's kind of nope. actually funny in an entrepreneurial sense of, hey, he was able to figure out a way to make money. Yeah, man. If he wasn't picking up women, eh, Rick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, right on. I'd rather <laughs> do a YouTube show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think about how popular our show would get if we had strippers on our YouTube show, man. We'd have like a million views in 24 hours, man. It would probably be pretty popular. And if you got the strippers to talk Hold about on. their entrepreneurialism, because yeah. my, dad, my dad did work at a strip joint, and people think strippers are, 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 aren't like on the up and up, but dude, these are high-level entrepreneurial ladies, and I'm going to tell you this again, why well, I tell my son-in-law this, if there's strippers and prostitutes in a town, uh, that's a happy town. It is a you know? happy town. <laughs> I mean, if they Dude. Provide, okay, I've had a lot of strippers and a lot of prostitutes that were my friends, Wait and on. they provide a valuable community service to they most do. communities. Now, there's some that aren't, you know, on the up and up. They try to steal from people and stuff <laughs> like that. But um, I have I had a friend. She's gone now. That was you know a prostitute for many years. And uh, how here long was she? How long was she a street worker, Rick? Um, I would say fifty years, probably. 50 years. Yeah, probably I think she started years. when she was wow. thirteen here on Oahu. Wow. And why she was a small uh, Puerto Rican lady, and I I met her um, back in the in the seventies here. And she was highly entrepreneurial, and okay. she was highly um, service orientated. Now, all the people she went over to, she wasn't having sex with them. Right. Okay? okay. She'd go over there, and she wasn't taking their money. They might not have money. She might trade food. She might help them clean their house, stuff like that. She don't want you to know that. She wants right. you to think she's having sex and putting out big. You know, right. so when you come by, you know, you pay and, and she puts out. But right. but she she have like a whole community of clientele that she was basically being friends with and getting paid That's for, awesome. almost like a counselor. They're counselors, you know. Jen, Jen just said she'd get her pole out and dance for us on the. You know, <laughs> there you go. Wow. <laughs> That that's therapy too. You know? That is therapy. I know, man. She would make us huge in like no time, man. Yeah. Oh. But you know, there there are people that don't have that uh, perception. That's and not a bad idea, Jen. My my friends, like they all go to strip joints, but because I was raised in one, I mm -hmm. I never really go to them. That you know, it's not something that I, that I I frequented because no. I was on the beach all the time. They're half yeah. naked here, anyways. I know. That's you know, I'm and jealous. I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I would tell my friends, okay, you want to meet girls, just take a surfboard to the beach and just sit. Yeah, next man. Yeah, you know, I just got out, dude. Yeah, too. Yeah. You know, they don't know the difference. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, wow. <laughs> but you know, I, I I've had a wonderful life, and I I'm going to continue to have it. I I would get down the wrong road sometimes where I wasn't having fun and working too hard and. And not, um, you know, being happy. But yeah. those days are long gone, man. You've been there, yep. Chris. Shit. Oh, of course. Yeah, I have. All of man. us have. Kareem. Yeah, yeah all of us have been. still work. 
a good. It's not that bad though, because I actually like what I do, so I can't complain. Yeah, if I you don't like mind. What you do. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind getting up and doing papers either. I mean, it's just when it's cold or I haven't slept enough that I, that I just. Yeah. Like, I didn't go into work today because I wasn't feeling well, and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stay home because I had a really bad headache when I went to bed last night, and I, I couldn't sleep right away. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just staying home. So I phoned in, and I got someone to cover my route because I just was like, you know what, I'm going to take a day for myself and just chill. So that's what I did. And then I went out and got this done today, though, this beautiful poster board that I made. So that was a that lot of work. Cool. I know, man. Cool, man. 50 bucks, I got went and got it done at Staples, man. Wow, all you would have to do is take your girlfriend with you. She probably could have got it less than that. Oh, she did it. Oh. <laughs> no, she came with me, but there was no uh, males working, so I couldn't get a uh, discount. If she <laughs> oh, man, timing. No, I'm kidding. I'm oh, teasing, Rick's man. funny. Oh, well, this because she's so hot, I know. They probably would have gave us a discount. Yeah, I know. She's but, cute. Uh, I, I, I saw her. She's cute. She is cute. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, because, uh, you know, there was just chicks working today, so unless they were rug munchers, you know, that wouldn't, <laughs> that wouldn't have done anything. Wow. Is that what you guys call it? I wonder what yeah, that was That's what called. I call it. <laughs> My sister calls it batting for the other team. I think that's <laughs> like a way, way <laughs> like an old, old saying from Wisconsin. Right on. I love it. Oh, it's been a good show, but there's only been three of us here, and nobody yeah. else showed up yet, man. Because I know, and I, and I have to get going. I, I've been told, and so well, I know people had internet issues, which is unfortunate because I couldn't get them to actually get on because of mm. Google Hangouts. I had a couple of people. Even Doug tried oh, to get man. on, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes technology isn't friendly. Yeah, doesn't want you on there. I don't know why technology wants to see our mugs today, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, I, I, I appreciated uh, being on this show because what you guys were saying is that it was actually brilliant, man. And uh, and if, if we could stay along those lines, I mean, I, I, I need a reminder to stay along those lines too, I mean. Yeah, me too. Because I, 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 I went to the beach yesterday and surfing, it was so beautiful and there's all these little rat kids on the inside giving you what we call in here in Hawaii stink eye. You know, they're just looking <laughs> at you. Oh, you piece of dog doo doo, right? You know, yeah. and, uh, and and I'm all happy, man. I'm I'm riding these beautiful waves, and they're all trying to get in your way. You know, so you have to That's go around. That's because they want to show off to you because you're older, Rick. That's yeah. why. Well, they you know they they realize I'm like a great grandpa to them here. Like most how grandpas long, are like. How long have you been surfing, Rick? Like forty years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, I started like in my 20s. No, I was like 19 or 18, and I was hooked, man. Without surfing, I'd be screwed. I mean, That's I'm awesome, so passionate dude. about it. Yeah. It keeps me in shape, you know, it keeps does. me going down the beach. Oh, yeah. and, and it keeps awesome. me like the breathing part and the timing and the balance and all the martial art things. But. That's awesome, man. I, I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. you. Love you too, man. Well, sure. You're, yeah, you're taking off? All right. Yep. Keep talking. Yeah, you guys have given a good show. It doesn't matter who's on there. It's still great content. Yeah. <laughs> Hell it's yeah. Awesome you entrepreneurial guys ideas. You guys yeah. are entrepreneurs, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Aloha. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow on class, Rick. All right, brothers. Cool. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. Okay, now it's just us, so what the hell are we going to talk about now? I do not know, actually. I didn't plan on it. I uh, I think it was interesting, though, like what we were talking about before, finding that anybody can really be an entrepreneur like Rick was saying. Mm -hmm. He just needs some ideas and a desire to make money. That's right. Or a desire to do something outside of the norm. Thought, well, yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense because if you're doing something that no one else is doing, people are going to gravitate to that, like we have with our show. You know, we're doing something that nobody else is doing, obviously, right? No, not that I haven't seen anybody doing this with Google Hangouts or video or anything of the sort. So, no, it's pretty unique. The only thing I think that's interesting is you have to have something you're doing that other people can come and enjoy. 
if it, you're doing something that somebody else really isn't interested in, like if I was just doing an MLM by myself, or which I've done, or if I was doing something else that people really weren't interested in, nobody would gravitate to it. Nobody would want to be a part of it. Right. It's clearly not the case. So you just got to add some value in any way you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I know that the more that we do this, the better I feel about it. You know, like I'm excited to come up with new topics and to see who's going to come on the panel and be featured and get their ideas out there and get yeah. themselves out there, get the exposure they need so that they can start attracting people to them to have a look at whatever they're doing. So, yeah, I mean, we had full panels a few times, which was awesome. And just like Dada and Freddie, Josh, mm -hmm. just tons of people from different backgrounds. Although it's like the holiday season, so I'm not really like running after people. No, because that's that's probably why we didn't have a full panel tonight is because it's, you know, two, three days after Christmas and, you know, people are hanging out with family. I mean, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I even had to like take time and get on here. I'm like, I, I had to make this in my schedule. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it. It's too right. much stuff. Well, you just got to prioritize a bit better, I guess, bro. It's, uh, I know I have to be on here and that's the whole thing, but it's not really, I have to, I want to be on here and I want to come on and have fun. Yeah, and me too. I'm having fun and keep, but we started this, it was just me and you, funny mm -hmm. enough. And then all of a sudden people just showed up. And yep. if I have a slow couple shows here or there, that's fine. I yeah, mean, of course it's fine. It's like the Steelers. They, they were doing good. And then they had a bad couple of games. Actually, funny enough, the Seahawks and the Panthers just lost. I know. You can I know. do really well and fall off. And that's a testament. Green Bay was another one that lost this week, eh? That wasn't – that what – I didn't see that coming. I didn't see either. When I actually heard – because I heard about that and watched, like, all the games. I'm like, wait, Carolina lost? And the yeah, Seahawks they did. Lost. Yeah. I guess it just goes to show that you can be big guns and you can have awesome days just, like, playing music or anything else. And then one day it's just not going to be – great and you're going to slip up a little bit. No big deal. Yeah. Because, I mean, when, when I didn't expect Seattle to lose to the Rams, and I watched that game, and they were flat for the whole first half, and I was just like, what the hell's going on, you know? That was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, do you want to wrap it up a bit early or what? what do you yeah, think? we can. I can do a call to action and then we could actually uh, hit up the Blues Buster and we have the one dude to, to interview at 930. Okay, so in one hour I got an, we got an interview tonight then? Yes. So okay. He didn't cancel so far, so. Okay, good. good. Okay. Well, I'm going to spend a bit of time with Jen and then I'll be home for the interview, okay? I'm going to get on the Blues Buster real quick. Okay. But yeah, just have a safe, happy new year. Don't get attacked by a bear. Don't attack I'll probably, a bear. I'll probably be chilling out with you on New Year's. If Jen's going to be over, but, you know, we can chat or whatever. I don't know if I'll be home. If I am, I'll let you Oh, know. you don't know if you'll be home? Okay. No. If I am, I'll let you know. But yeah, have a safe, happy new year. Write down your goals. I am. Do as soon that. As I get home. I uh, actually finished my timeline today, so I'm pretty happy too. We have one viewer. Hi, viewer. Hi, and, viewer. Whoever you are. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely, uh, we're going to start picking it up uh, once New Year's here, get people back and yes, just get our are. panel back. Yeah. I'm not sure what, why, who, I mean, did, who said they were coming tonight? I mean, did we not? Uh, I'm going to end the show and then I will look at that. But yeah, have a good New Year, guys.